Hello everybody, Cool here, and today I'm back to do another Minecraft build time lapse. Today we're going to be doing one of a small farm nearby a creek and a village. As you may see on the ground here, I have already gone in and laid out using orange and pink wool where I plan on building the different buildings and fields. To begin, I go in with World Painter and change all of the orange walls to cobblestone ones. Then, I go around and start detailing them by adding stairs and slabs spilling down from it to make it look like the stones were piled there and naturally began to come apart and fall down over time. In the distance, you may see the village that I have built previously, as well as the bridge leading over to it. This farm is built nearby the village to help supply its citizens with a source of food. As you may have noticed, on the back field, the one farthest from us right now, the way I piled up the stones was to make them sort of to lean against the area where the pink wool is. This is because I plan on I plan on building a building later on in this video there. Now, since this is a relatively large build, I will be splitting this video into two parts. The first part is the one you're watching right now, and will include the fields and two of the buildings, including the stables and one of the smaller homesteads included on the farm. The second video will include me building up the two barns and the two other homesteads located on the farm. Once I finish detailing the walls, I go in with World Painter and use a brush to sprinkle in a few pieces of mossy cobblestone throughout the walls. Then I head back to the first field and begin hoeing it and, and planting wheat there. My plan for this section is to put wheat in this field and put wheat in the two other large fields. In the smaller two fields, the farthest ones away from us right now, I plan on planting potatoes and carrots to supplement the wheat and add a wider variety of crops. If anybody is wondering what texture pack, shaders, or mods I'm using in this video, all of that information can always be found in the description. A trick I learned when making this farm that you, that you might find interesting and helpful. Crops don't actually need water by them to grow. As long as you plant the seeds quickly after hoeing them, the farmland will not turn back into dirt, and the seeds will just still grow, albeit more slowly. After I finish with the first field, I go to the smaller one farthest away from us right now and begin planting wheat there as well.
once I finish that one, I go on to add wheat in the second one back there as well. After I finish planting wheat in the second of the smaller, larger fields, I head back into the first smaller field and plant carrots there. Once I finish that, I move on to the smaller field, the other smaller field, and begin planting potatoes there. But before long, I realize that there's a tree in my way. I decide, instead of taking it down, I'm going to put a custom one there, in a similar style, instead. So I go in, build up the trunk and branches, and then add in leaves. Then I move the beehive that once sat in the original tree back into the custom one I made. Then I go back in and finish up the planting the potatoes. Then, I spawn in a few more bees, because there seemed to only be one surviving. After I finish up the potato field, I go over to the building on the left here, and begin building up what will eventually be the stables. To start, I lay out the corners with logs, and then pile up cobblestone in a naturalish way to be the foundation. Then I go around with spruce slabs and begin outlining where the roof is going to go. Then I take wood planks and wood slabs and fill in the rest of the roof. Then, I go in and add some doors and trapdoors as fences to keep the horses in. Instead of using normal 1 meter tall fences, because most horses could jump over a thing that small in real life, I use 2 meter tall doors and trapdoors instead. After I finish adding those, I go inside the stall, each stall and make the floor a bit more muddy by adding podzol and coarse dirt. I also add a water trough made with a cauldron and a small food trough made with some podzol and spruce trapdoors. I also add some lanterns to provide a bit of light. After I finish up the stables, I move on to the first homestead and last thing we will be building in this video. To begin, I once again use logs to mark out the corners and build up cobblestone as the main wall material. Then I outline the roof with spruce planks and slabs and go in and fill the rest of the roof with oak planks and slabs. Then I break in spots for windows in the cobblestone as well as breaking out a spot for a door. I then go in and add mossy cobblestone to add a bit of variation to the cobblestone walls. Then I add some small supports at the corners of the roofs to add a little bit of detail and add windows. I also add a table out front in case they need to store anything without taking it inside the house. I add a small brick chimney sticking out the top as well and add some birch leaves around it as well as some over near the stables. I also had a sm
Then, I head over to the side of the road opposite from the entrance to the farm and begin building up a custom tree similar to the one I did earlier. I start by building up the trunk and branches with oak wood and then add oak leaves around it. Then I add some grass, bushes, and bone meal to add a little bit more overgrowth along the farm. Then I add in some path going along the through the fields and connecting up to the different buildings. And with that, the video is pretty much done. Now let's see some cinematic shots of the finished product. As we near the end of the video, I would like to remind everyone that if you like the video, please give it a like, and if you enjoy my content, please subscribe. I do plan on releasing a part of this video relatively soon, so keep your eyes open. See you next time.